Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited Mr. Kamal Obad, the CEO and co-founder of Nebula Genomics. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. So before we get on with the interview, uh, genomics is, well, it's, it's an expertise, right? So um, sure. everyday users, per se, like myself, really don't know what genomics do. So could you tell us what is genomics, first of all? Sure, so genomics is essentially the study of genomes, mm -hmm. which is DNA. Um, so it's about how do you read DNA, how do you manipulate DNA, how do you edit DNA. Um, genome sequencing is all revolved around how do we read someone's DNA. So every person has a unique DNA uh, strand inside of them in each of their cells, mm -hmm. uh, which is essentially three letters long, ATCGs. So how do we read all of this? Um, that's the field of genomics. It's all about understanding DNA better and understanding its use cases better. So uh, I came across an article explaining that only 2 million people out of the uh, 70 billion people around the world are uh, genetically uh, genomic sequenced. Yeah. So uh, then tell us, what's the use? Uh, if sure. Geno why, uh, genomics sequencing uh, gets a mass adoption or collects a lot of data, what's the uh, advantages, the, uh, the benefits that the uh, society is going to uh, you know, experience? Sure, so, so 15 years ago, it cost $3 billion to sequence one person's genome. Mm -hmm. um, today, it costs $1,000 to sequence one person's genome. And like you mentioned, that's only led to 2 million people doing whole genome sequencing. So not very many people have done it. Um, but as the cost has dra drastically gone down for genome sequencing, everyone's been very excited because the idea was once millions and millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people get sequenced, all these interesting use cases will be developed. Mm -hmm. So if we have everyone's DNA, we're able to do things like understand diseases better, develop new drugs more effectively, uh, treat diseases more better, because now we can do personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. So I can look at you, I can see the illness you have, I can look at your DNA, and I can identify which treatment is gonna be best for you based off of that. Um, unfortunately, this hasn't been reality yet. Like you mentioned, not many people have done genome sequencing, only mm -hmm. around two million. Um, so even though the price has gone down a lot, we haven't seen a lot of adoption. So I noticed that you gave a little bit of an answer to this, but then uh, what's the underpinning problem of the industry? Is it the cost or is it the efficiency? Yeah, so there's, there's two big problems right now. One is fragmentation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the healthcare data that exists today, genomic data included in electronic health records, is very fragmented. Mm -hmm. So hospitals have their own data, biobanks have their own data, individuals have their own data. And if you want to amass large data sets for, for research purposes, for instance, if you want to do machine learning on genomic and health data, mm -hmm. um, it's very expensive and very hard to do this. So that's why you see a lot of researchers and drug development not using a lot of genomic data in their research today, because mm -hmm. it's just so much overhead to acquire these data sets. Um, because of the fragmentation and the regulation involved in the space. Uh, and then the second issue is just consumer awareness and consumer interest. So there hasn't been a ton of um, consumer interest in whole genome sequencing. People haven't feel, felt incentivized to get sequenced and to share their data, yes, yes. Um, which is what Nebula Genomics is trying to solve, essentially. Those mm -hmm. two issues of fragmentation and incentives for people to share data. So of all the aforementioned problems, uh, uh, use case, uh, gen uh, Nebula Genomics aims to resolve and improve the industry using blockchain. So uh, in Nebula Genomics, how would the technology of blockchain, I'm pre technology of blockchain used? Because I'm sure it taps into a lot of regulation, legal issues, and all that. Yeah. So so with Nebula, healthcare data is, is highly regulated, um, and it becomes a lot easier. So so there, there's two options here, right? The one option is is go to all these different data sets databases and centralize them and put them in one place and then tell researchers they can come use this. Mm -hmm. But from a regulatory and uh, practical perspective, that's almost impossible. People have tried to do this. It's very hard to transfer data across borders. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to re-get patient consent. Um, so the goal here is to somehow take all these databases, keep them where they're at, and connect them. Mm -hmm. So this is where decentralization is very useful, right? We can build a trustless ecosystem and network where different healthcare sources or databases, including individual data owners, can plug in, monetize their health data, share their health data, and get rewarded for doing so. Um, so that, that's where decentralization and blockchain comes into the space is by dealing with the fragmentation mm -hmm. and allowing data to stay where it is, which is much simpler, while still making it easily shareable. So uh, I heard an interesting concept, which is monetization. Yeah. So what users are interested is, in is, is making money out of uh, taking part in the Nebula network. So then how would the Nebula network incentivize users to take part in your uh, genomic sequencing? And uh, simply put, how would the users make money? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, there, there's, there's a few incentives for users to want to participate. One is today, one reason a lot of people haven't done sequencing is you pay someone money to collect your data. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. a personal genomic company, and then they take your data and then they resell it to pharma companies for even more. Mm -hmm. So why should you be paying for sequencing? Instead, we can connect you directly to researchers and they'll pay for you to get sequencing because they want access to your data. And in return, what you get is free sequencing. You get free analytics based on your health data um, and you get valuable insights. Plus, you can continuously monetize that data. Mm -hmm. So this is the first incentive we want to provide to users is, is subsidies for whole genome sequencing because mm -hmm. we can connect them directly with researchers. Um, two is once you get sequenced, once you have this data, once you've uploaded health data or shared health data as well, uh, you're able to continuously passively monetize this. So whenever someone wants to access it or run analysis on your data, you're able to say yes or no and they can do so and then you get compensated for that. I'm curious to ask about the specific, uh, well, the price of the month sure. the reward. So uh, if, pers if say a person, well, like me, if I were to provide my uh, genomic sequencing information to a company or nebula network, uh, how would the rate be? It, it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some people who could probably make tens of thousands of dollars a year just off of their health data. Mm -hmm. Other people would make less. Uh, so it really depends on, on a case-by-case -case basis and, and you know, what's interesting to researchers to acquire. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's only, monetizing your data is only one of the value propositions here, right? Mm -hmm. the, the platform we're building and the applications that we're building on top of the protocol uh, are, are giving users, are enabling users to collect their health data into one space and benefit from it. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to have your genomic data, your health data, your health records, and we'll be able to use that to give you health recommendations and improve your lifestyle and improve your longevity. Um, so that's another important aspect for how we incentivize individuals. We provide tools for them to bring their health data in one place and then they benefit from services in the ecosystem. So uh, since you guys are dealing with personal data, I have to ask you, you guys must have privacy issues. So how is privacy issue, I mean, the data storage issue uh, resolved in Nebula Network? Yeah, so Nebula doesn't store user data. Um, mm -hmm. This is a completely open source decentralized protocol. Users can store uh, data on their own hardware if they want to. Everything is encrypted client side. Um, you can delegate access to your data mm -hmm. to third parties. So you can, we have, for instance, we're going to have nodes, uh, nonprofits running nodes in our network. Mm -hmm. So you can say that I want this nonprofit company to delegate access to my data or manage my data for me. Mm -hmm. um, or you could choose to manage your data yourself by running your own node. Um, but Nebula itself isn't storing user data mm -hmm. and everything remains encrypted client side so we don't have any access to user data. Um, you can treat us, essentially we're building, we're, we're, we've built the protocol and we're also building applications on top of the protocol, um, but we're in no way the central authority controlling what's happening on the network so, or storing uh, all the data. According to the uh, white paper of uh, Nebula Network, uh, I saw the, how the encryption part takes uh, place. So uh, first, the individual provides information and it gets encrypted and it gets stored. But then when the stored information gets provided to a company, it gets re-encrypted and then goes to the company. Yeah. So efficiency-wise, is that uh, much cheaper or uh, because you, res you resolve the privacy issues, but then what about the pricing? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's two options for building out this marketplace. One is allowing data buyers or researchers to get direct contact to individuals and mm -hmm. request their data. In that scenario, the individuals all need to remain online constantly. Yes. So that's one op option, they can do that. That might not be very efficient from the data acquire perspective because they need to wait for everyone to be online and say yes or no to the data access. Yes, yes. Um, and in that case, you don't need this proxy re-encryption, mm -hmm. which you kind of described where you encrypt the data twice. Um, the second way that data can be managed in the network is you can delegate access to your data mm -hmm. to another party, so another node. So for instance, if we have nonprofits that are running nodes for us. So these are advocacy groups working with patients. Mm -hmm. They have large patient communities of tens of thousands of people. These patient advocacy groups can build nodes for these patients to share data with them, mm -hmm. and then they can stay encrypted, and then they can re-encrypt it and give it to data acquirers. So instead of having all these thousands of people stay online constantly to mm -hmm. say yes or no to data access, you have that one node that's managing all the access, but still doesn't have access to the data itself. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why uh, we do the double encryption. So since you guys are using blockchain, I'm pretty sure the reward that's subcompensation is going under the process of tokenization, right? Yeah. So uh, the Nebula app, or the since it's an open source project, uh, well, however the uh, participants or companies take part in the uh, ecosystem, how does the tokenization or the compensation process do the tokens take place? Yeah, so, so we have the Nebula token and we're gonna be launching it very soon. Mm -hmm. um, the, the token, the, the core use case of the token isn't for uh, transactions. So it isn't, the core use case isn't a currency. Mm -hmm. um, we have our own native blockchain that we've built. Uh, so this token is, is essentially the, the fuel that powers our native blockchain. Mm -hmm. And it's also used for staking. So we want to incentivize users to 
stay on the platform long term and share data long term. Because mm -hmm. if you build long term longitudinal data sets, that's what's very valuable to medical researchers. Yes, yes. Right? Um, so the token is one of the ways to do that. And the token is another way to govern the whole system. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we're opening up the platform to any developer, any third party developer. Mm -hmm. But how do you guarantee that third party developers are meeting some quality threshold and are providing yeah, yeah. high quality health services, which is really important? Mm -hmm. Well, the token is supposed to incentivize that as well. So. Um, it's, it's governed by token holders, essentially, who can sell services in the platform. So if, if a user holds tokens, they can stake their tokens into a company they uh, believe that they're worth, that worthy of taking part, they can support them and have them uh, access to the data itself? Yeah, so, so, so users can stake tokens to participate in studies. Um, users can be compensated in tokens as well, but users can be compensated in any way. So like I mentioned, the, op the platform is completely open, so anyone can build an application on top of it. Um, so you could build an application that pays users in dollars or fiat for sharing their data. And the application can handle all of the token staking on the user's behalf. Mm -hmm. It's the application's job to provide high quality data because they're the ones who are, you know all the data came from them essentially. Yeah, yeah they're actually the one providing the service, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's different ways for this to work. Um, users can run their own node and earn cryptocurrency directly, or mm -hmm. they can work through one of these apps and earn fiat or, or free healthcare analytics or free services for doing the, the work instead. So uh, since the beginning of the interview, there's the big question that I wanted to ask. What's in your hand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so like I mentioned, we're building the Nebula app, um, which is going to be the first application launching on top of the Nebula protocol. And one of the things we're doing is we're offering sequencing kits. Mm -hmm. So these are kits that sell straight to your door. Um, we mail it to you. You receive a little test tube. You can spit in it. And then we'll do genome sequencing for you and we'll give you back the data so we don't store any of the data. And then you can choose to monetize your data on the Nebula network. So we're going to be launching with this from day one. Um, and the goal is eventually we'll have more applications that are launching with other services, so other types of sequencing, microbiome sequencing. Mm -hmm. And all of this is being done through the ecosystem and all the data is being shared through the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to ask you then, uh, since you guys have the product ready, I'm pretty sure you guys have the app ready, yeah. when is the whole ecosystem going to launch? So it's launching, we haven't publicly set a, a date, but it's launching very soon. Mm -hmm. um, so before the end of this year, essentially, we're in the final stages of testing. You guys have two months left. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> very soon, I promise. <laughs> so uh, you're here in Korea and uh, genomic sequencing is not very famous in Korea. Yeah. So uh, to all the daily users or uh, the audience, uh, would you care to give out a last comment so that they uh, pay attention and take part in genomic sequencing? Yeah, so, so for everyone to know, it's your health data is very valuable, not just financially, but also for researchers. So if you contribute your health data to research, we can cure diseases, we can develop better personalized therapies, and we can just generally improve people's health. Um, but something we want to prevent with nebula genomics is that you know, one day there's a company that owns all of the health data. Instead, we're taking a decentralized approach where no one owns the health data, but it's still shareable. Uh, so this is interesting to you. Keep an eye out for our launch coming the, within the next two months. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.